Tennessee Representative Justin Pearson was officially sworn back into the State House today, marking the end of what has been an incredibly unsuccessful, not to mention downright embarrassing, political stunt by Republicans. And while it may have shocked the world to see not just the complete disregard for Democratic values, but the utterly disrespectful treatment of these two young black lawmakers in the year of our Lord 2023, it shouldn't have shocked anyone who's been paying close attention to the Tennessee Republican Party. One reporter for Politico, who previously worked at the Tennessean covering the state capitol, says that this is actually pretty on brand, recalling how the chief of staff to the former House Speaker once wrote in a text message, quote, black people are idiots. Another time, a member of House Republican leadership referred to Justin Jones, then an activist, and another black lawmaker as baboons. And a member presenting a bill about sanctuary cities used the term wetback while telling a story. That's what they were saying in 2018 and 2020. I asked Justin Pearson about that last night. The state capitol run by the Republican majority is a toxic work environment. Uh, I will be the first to admit that. It is undergirded by white supremacy and patriarchy. It has for too long operated as a place of injustice and, and, and disservice to the people of the state of Tennessee. Those are the things that undergird the foundations of the institution. And today, new audio uncovered by the Tennessee Holler of a closed-door meeting of the Republican caucus after the votes to expel the Tennessee Three just further proves Pearson's point. NBC News has not independently verified the recording, but when asked about it, Tennessee House Republicans told a local ABC affiliate, we have no comment about private conversations. Take a listen. You should have went to the speaker and said, I'm changing my vote. And if it put us at 65, somebody would have taken you behind the dais and explained to you why this is important. But it would have given us the opportunity to not throw the rest of us under the bus. I've been called a racist, a misogynist, a white supremacist more in the last two months of my life than I had my entire life. By golly, I'm biting my tongue. Joining me now is Michael Harriet, columnist for The Grio. Uh, Michael, thank you for, for being here. One of the other things that one of the uh, other people on that recording said is, I think now more than ever, everyone should recognize that Democrats are not our friends. And then they named three black lawmakers and point them out and saying, I've never had anybody call me a racist. The last three days, I've heard them all call me a racist, essentially saying that the villains were the black lawmakers. What, what do you make of all of this, given what you know about Tennessee and the way it's run? Well, you know, it's par for the course in Tennessee. Remember, before the Civil War, Tennessee legislature tried to pass a law to expel all the Negroes. They would give them a choice to either voluntarily submit themselves to being or to leave and go back to Africa, literally. So they were going to expel all of the black people from the state uh, before the Civil War. And it seems as if they had never stopped trying. Remember, the Speaker of the House. Uh, represents a district that mysteriously in 1900, all of the black people disappeared in this district. And nobody could ever figure out why. If you look at the 1890 census, there were 500 black people in Crossville, Tennessee. And in 1900, two, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, and nobody would, in 1960, there were two, right? And, but remember, every time the people in this district went to elementary school and when they walked through the front doors, there was a mural of a lynching on the wall until 2018. So this is, when you look at that environment, this is no surprise. And we have a, a picture of that mural because th th there have been a lot of questions. You know, the other person who has become, there it is, you can see a lynching, you can see a Confederate flag. That is the, and they're called the rebels. Um, that is where, um, per your research and reporting, that is where the current speaker's kids go to school, right? Let's talk about his district. Is it still? I know it historically it was a sundown town, meaning blacks were told, you better be out of here by sundown, you can't be here. Is it still as seemingly racist and white supremacist and segregated as it has been? Well, remember now that they took that mural down, the people who lived in this community was were outraged. And uh and yeah, I mean it's still less than one percent black. Uh it's still pretty white. Um, you know, we know the speaker really doesn't kind of spend most of his time there. His children go yeah. to an even wider school in uh, Nashville, right, right outside of Nashville. One of those Christian white uh, nationalists, the John Edwards Classical Education and Society. And it, the, the viewers should know that classical education 
is one of those dog whistles that means CRT is not taught here. Um, you know, when the, those people like the Moms of Liberty uh, oppose CRT, they say they want their children to have a classical education, which means like the stuff that the, da the Daughters of the Confederacy want you to learn, the stuff that, you know, says that George Washington was not a slave. That's the stuff <laughs> that they hear is a classical education. Let me play one more bite. This is uh, what they f claim they fear. This is a representative, state representative named Scott Sapicki. Um, let's listen to what he had to say. The left wants Tennessee so bad because if they get us the southeast folks, and it's game over for the republic. This is not a neighborhood social gathering. We are fighting for the republic of our country right now. And the world is staring at us. Are we going to stand our ground? Based on the fact that they don't allow Democrats to even put bills on the floor, the fact that they do voice votes where they just make up who they heard scream in the yell in the majority, and they literally won't allow Democrats to do anything, and they have a supermajority, what does that mean when you hear that? We're fighting for the future of our country. The left wants Tennessee so bad. If they get us, the Southeast falls, and it's game over. Right. What, what they mean is, you know, black people. Right, like, like, so you would think that Tennessee was a really white state when you look at the makeup of the state legislature, but it's not. They just, they've just gerrymandered the black people out. They've instilled institutional white supremacy on the maps in the education system. Remember this: the, the Speaker of the House um, pushed for the school board elections to be partisan. He uh, eliminated poverty-based COVID uh, funds for the public schools, and then gave them all that sixty million dollars to Christian-based, white, rich, public, I mean, private schools. So, like, they're instilling white supremacy, and they fear that, like, any notch that goes towards equality is a notch that kind of eliminates them from their power. And I don't think it is necessarily about protecting the white people, because if they wanted to protect the white people, they would have passed the gun control legislation, right? right? They would have they would have taught uh, wanted their kids to learn actual history. So they don't want to protect white people. They want to protect white power. Yeah, and they that mean that sounds like they're no different than Florida, Mississippi. You, I, we could go on and on and on where this is yeah. happening across the country. Michael Harriet uh, and y'all can't. I cannot wait for Black AF history to come out. So thank you for being on here. Really appreciate you. Thank and you. Still.